In this short video, we would like to introduce you to the web-based GDTF file builder, which provides a convenient way of making GDTF files. This first page of the Fixture Builder is split into two areas. On the left side, you can start to create a new GDTF file, which is completely empty, or you just choose one of the default Fixture types, uh, which is for example an LED par or a moving light. And if you scroll down, you can restore your last session. On the right side of the Fixture Builder start page, you can customize existing files. To do so, you just need a GDTF file and you drop this into this area over here and then it opens up and you can start to customize the file. To show you which steps are needed to create a GDTF file, we start with the default moving head. The first page um, is about the general information of the fixture, such as the name, the manufacturer, and you can also upload an image of the fixture file. As soon as you have provided all the information about the fixture, you can press the next button. You are now in the geometry part of the fixture builder, and in here you have to describe the geometry of the fixture. The geometry of the fixture is very important because also the DMX layout of your fixture is based on that geometry. You will see that later on when we come to the DMX tab. You can see here the basic structure of my moving light. It consists of a base, a yoke, a hat and very important the beam. The beam has some additional properties inside where you can describe in detail how the light output of your fixture looks. So you can choose the lamp type, how bright the fixture will be and in which color temperature it should be visualized. So please make sure that you fulfill all this information in an accurate way. So this makes sure that your fixture type will be visualized correctly. As soon as we have done this we press next again and we get to a part which is called physical descriptions. In this topic you can describe emitters and filters which are used in your fixture. By simply clicking the add button you add another emitter and then you can provide physical information about this emitter and if you click on the tab filters and by pressing add again you can add a filter like a CMY filter mixing system for example and provide also physical information about that one. Then we press the next button again and we get to a topic which is called wheels. In here you can define all the color, gobo, animation and other wheels which are used in your fixture. By pressing add wheel you can add another wheel and with add wheel slot you can add multiple wheel slots. To configure these wheel slots, you can click on it and on the right side you have the possibility to give it a name or choose a color from the color picker or you can also upload a Gobo PNG if you want to create a Gobo wheel. To change the name of the wheel you can press on this small button which gives you the possibility of additional properties. As soon as you have created all the wheels which are used in your fixture, you can press the next button and get to the most important part of the fixture builder. It's the DMX tab, which gives you the possibility to create all DMX modes of your fixture. Over here you have the channel overview. So there are already a few channels created because we have loaded a default template GDTF file. If you want to add another mode, you press Add Mode and create a second mode. If you want to create more channels, you press the Add Channel button. To show you how to create a channel, I press Add Channel. Very important in this moment is that you have to decide to which geometry this channel belongs, because every channel in a fixture has to have a geometry where it belongs to. So for example, when you want to create a color wheel, you choose the hat because 
the color wheel is physically located in the head. As attribute, we are looking for a color, so I type in color, and color1 is the attribute for a color wheel. OK. I've now added this channel to my channel overview, and over here I need to define the start address of this channel. 6. If you have channels with different other resolutions, you can choose the resolution and give this the other addresses which are needed. You can also customize the default value and highlight value if you want to. If we scroll down, we can split this logical channel into multiple channel functions. For example, when my color wheel has a color wheel selection part and also a color wheel spin part, I can add another channel function, which is then, for example, color one wheel spin. I can give this a name. And then I can scroll down farther and over here we can add multiple channel sets to have quick access to, for example, the colors or the wheel spin direction. A very important part is also this small sign. We have seen it already. It gives you additional properties of the channel function. And here you can choose, for example, the wheel which we have created in the wheels tab. As soon as you have created all the channels, you can click on the name of the mode to get an overview of uh, the, the mode and the channels which are used in this mode. If there is something red inside here, you need to look carefully at the DMX channel because most likely there is something wrong with it. If we press next, we get to the attributes tab. The attributes tab is more or less a summary of what we have done in all the tabs before and it gives you a summary of your picture. You can check if the attributes are correct and if everything is ready to be uploaded. To upload the picture to gdtf-share.com you press the upload button. In here you need to type in a revision text about your picture and then you can press OK to upload the picture to gdtf-share.com or, you can see it down here, there is also a copy saved to your local computer to the download folder of the browser. And this is the easy way how you can create GDTF files with the GDTF Picture Builder.